Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I just have Tom Likas! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's in every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. It can be anything you think we should have talked about. Maybe we didn't get it to the topic you thought we should have gotten into. You can call up here, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the phone. And uh, Dino Giuseppe D'Amelio is in the other room there. It's just Jay. Oh, is it just Jay? Yeah. What does the J stand? Don't tell me the J is for Giuseppe. For nothing. It stands for nothing? Can you do that? I mean, for years I've buried my middle name, but could I just have a middle initial with no name attached to it? You know, Franklin D. Roosevelt. The D didn't stand for anything. Oh, no, wait, it was Franklin Delano. Who was the president? Oh, Harry S. Truman. It's Harry S. Truman right after him. The S doesn't stand for anything. It's just S. Did you know that? Look it up. Harry S. Truman. It's true. Anyway, here we are with your telephone calls, and the phone number is easy enough. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This is Exaby on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Before we get to your call, uh, what kind of a name is Exaby? <laughs> it's a southern name. I was born and raised in Leland, Mississippi. Is your last name Shanist? No. <laughs> My last name is Johnson. Oh. B. Johnson. Shanist would be a good last name. It would be. <laughs> Maybe if you ever meet a guy's last name is Shanist, you should marry that guy immediately. That would be very interesting. Yes. This is my wife, Exhibitionist. <laughs> What can I do for you, Exabee? Well, I just moved down to the area four weeks ago. From? I moved down from Northern California, where I lived in Blue Lakes, California, in Lake County. Oh, boy, that's a beautiful area. Oh, I love it up there. Most Californians don't even know about it, but uh, I know. Lake because County I is northeast of the Napa Valley, and it is fantastic. Yes, it is. It's the most gorgeous place on earth. Please. I almost bought a house there, but it was just too hard to get to from Southern California. That's true. It is. You had to, like, fly into Oakland or Sacramento and then drive for, like, three hours. You do through mountains and all sorts of ridges. It's a, it's a trek, but it's worth it once you get there. That's why it's so beautiful. <laughs> well, maybe one day when I'm near death, I'll buy a place up there. <laughs> and I don't have to commute. That's right. Anyway, XB, what can I do for you? Well... I was channel surfing because, as being new to the area, I didn't know what stations to listen to, and I heard you talking. And my immediate response was anger and disgust. But then I started listening to what you had to say and what you said to the men, and I had to say to myself, he's right. He's right on. Because what you tell the men to do is how I have been living my life forever. And uh, what you warn the men against is what I have to protect myself against. Really? You run into a lot of guys who want to take you for your money? Yes. Wow. And yes, yes. What happened to me, and I, and I won't be long, what happened to me is um, Leland, Mississippi is, uh, I guess, similar to your area, and that was very, very poor and impoverished. My mom had, has five children, and my father left her because of drug addiction and left her to raise five kids by herself. 
I was the oldest of the five, and there was a 9 and 10 and 11-year difference between me and the younger four. So, of course, growing up, I took care of all the kids with my mom. And going through that horrible government system of public assistance, Section 8, food stamps, all of this stuff that happens to women with lots of children, I said to myself at a very young age, I don't want this to happen to me. I am not going to get pregnant. I'm not going to have children. And Or if I do, I'm going to make sure that I have more than enough money to take care of them myself, no matter what anyone else does. And it was a radical view then, because I used to say this, as all of my girlfriends got pregnant and married and remarried and, you know, just doing whatever they do as you get older, I spent my time going to school, going to graduate school, getting my degrees, earning money, purchasing assets, and becoming independent. And now at the age of 38, I just realized that, wow, I, I don't have to worry about too many things now. Life is pretty good. It's pretty darn good, and it's only getting better. Look at you. Uh, yeah, but, but what's happened to me, because this, this is why I, I kind of turned and said, this, Tom makes a lot of sense. I have the problem that when I meet a man, because I'm overly generous, I don't look at what car they drive or um, I don't look at what we do for a living. I actually look at how do you treat me. And um, I end up, I ended up with a man who attempted to get me pregnant, and um, and I didn't realize what he was trying to do. What he didn't know was that I was on the pill. And so, um, make a long story short, he couldn't figure out why I wasn't pregnant. And then I discovered that he was trying to make me pregnant, and I dumped him. But luckily, I have protected myself against that. Wow. Yeah, so there are men out there, is what I'm trying to say, Tom. There are actually men out there that I call layabouts who do the same thing that some women try to do to men. That's outrageous. Oh, it happens all the time. It happens all the time, I promise you. And um, it happened to me twice, but twice I, I escaped. By the and way, now, you, I, by the way, totally by the way, if I careful. can criticize anything, you shouldn't be so generous. Right. <laughs> You're right. I am not now. Now I'm a lot more discriminating, and I pay attention. And um, I guess I kind, of, I kind of have to look and observe a lot more before I decide to date someone. But um, you're telling the men the truth, Tom. I hate to say it. I hate. I don't agree with like not, maybe ten percent of what you have to say. I don't agree with. But the other ninety percent is right on point. I love exactly. it. I love it. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Exabee. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Art on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. How's everything? All right, anyways, uh, I wanted to talk to you about gratuities. I know there's a lot of different subjects you, sp you spoke about, and I wanted to talk to you about gratuities and how uh, you feel about it. I mean, do you like to give tips, or do you think people... Uh, it depends on who's tips? asking. Okay, let's give you my situation. I'm an auto club driver. I drive for the auto club where I, you know, service AAA members. But, you know, obviously we do a lot of work for them for a very little money. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't appreciate us. As well, well, I think it depends on how prompt you are and how good a job you do. Well, there's been times where people have praised me that I've done such a good job and that they, they, they were reluctant on having a driver come out because they were, they were always afraid, you know, that the driver's going to be either the, some, you know. I mean, that would, be a, that would be a good way to show it would be a tip. Right. But I can't tell you how many times I was caught, you know, at the... Uh, I was caught in the wrong neighborhood at the wrong time and I've got all my doors locked and I call AAA and an hour later I'm still sitting there. Uh, that guy's not getting a tip. Well, you can't blame the guy because he's busy all night. Cause well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not my problem. You see, I'm the well, customer, right. and I'm doing the tipping. You're right. And your problems are not my problem, okay? If okay, you so are if prompt the and come on time. if the guy comes on time and uh, and does a good job, yeah, I would tip. But if the guy comes an hour later when he gets to everybody else first and I'm sitting there cold and in my car in a dangerous neighborhood, and then the guy uh, does a haphazard job. No, I'm not going to tip for that. Well, unfortunately, I, I can't say anything about that because I don't work in a dangerous neighborhood. So. All right, but let's <laughs> I say, work, I work in Glendale, so let's it's, say it's just late at night. Days. Let's say it's just late at night. 
It's late at night. I work nights. Late at uh, night. Let's, say it's a, really let's just say, all right, you leave me late at night. I don't care where it is. If I have to sit in my car for an hour late at night and you haven't arrived yet, there's no tip coming your way. You're absolutely right. But, see, that's the problem. I don't usually have that type of issue because I'm always on time most of the time. Well, I, that's good. And so uh, here's the. Uh, and by the way, by, by, by the by the way, by the way, that's not enough, okay? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, exactly. When, when you call AAA, they tell they sure. tell us you'll be along with between 15 and 30 minutes. That's what they tell us. So if you come between 15 and 30 minutes after we make the phone call, then uh, that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, to me, a tip is for some additional service you provide. Either you do the job really, really well and in a very courteous manner. Uh, or you, you show up in five minutes and get it done so fast you make my head spin. Uh, but but y y the fact that you show up, uh, the fact that you do your yeah. job is not enough to get a tip. I totally, I totally, oh, oh, okay. So then what we should do is we should not pay those waitresses for giving us a tip because they're doing their job by serving our food. Why is it mentoring for us to pay a 15% tip to a uh, Let me tell you something. If a wait, uh, can I tell you something? If a waitress uh, takes too long to deliver my food or has a snotty attitude, I do not give a tip. I don't give a penny. Even though it's the law that we're supposed to give 15 No, it is not the law. That is not the law. Well, it's mandatory. Somehow. No, it's not mandatory. It's There are some restaurants that if you're at a party of six or more or eight or more, they'll add on a service charge. But in this country, other than that, tips are uh, 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 voluntary. Okay. Well, then let me tell you this. Okay, here, as an auto club driver, we're only allowed to tow people to a safe spot. We don't have to put back it into those 50 foot, 100 foot driveway. Or even try to push it into those driveways or anything like that, or stop turning in garage. Again, if you provide, if you provide, uh, you, 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 why are you arguing with me? I said if you I'm provide, arguing. if you provide an additional service, or you do your job particularly well and particularly promptly, okay. then I recommend a tip. If you just simply show up and do what you're supposed to do, you don't deserve a tip. Well, I just wanted to let out another message, by the way. I, there's always there's that misconception that auto club drivers don't accept tips. And I just want to let at least your listeners know that we do actually do accept tips. And if you feel that we should deserve one, you know, yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying, you know, obviously it's part of our income, you know. It's just like everybody else. It's a job, and there's a certain part of the job that, you know, brings you additional income so you can survive. Well, but again, I think the people who should get that additional income are people who do a particularly great job, not everybody. And if you have a sense of entitlement about being tipped, I'm not going to entertain it on the show. Well, I understand that, and I, and I, I totally understand you, what, what you're saying, Tom, and at least to, to your listeners, and if the driver's doing a great job, show your appreciation. I have no I problem have with that. Uh, I, I would never, ever tip a barista at Starbucks. I never have, and I never will, ever. Well, that I wouldn't do either. They put coffee in a cup, and they make me wait in line like everybody else. Well, you, what type of tip are you going to give on a $4 item? Come on, you know. But, you know. The people give a buck. I see it all the time. Yeah? Well, that's generous people. I think that's they're good. stupid. <laughs> what goes around comes around. That's the way I look at it. How do you mean that? Well, if you do good, good will come back to you. Uh, again, uh, Starbucks Corporation makes billions of dollars wow. in revenue. And, uh, you know, if... Oh, I don't buy at Starbucks anyway. Right? And, I, and I, I not, Well, better. I'm talking about Starbucks, okay? And okay, uh, if, if you can't make enough on a $4 cup of coffee to pay people properly, that's not my problem. I say if baristas don't like the pay scale at Starbucks, they should quit. You're absolutely right. I mean, they chose that job because uh, that job doesn't well, have... Well, putting coffee in a cup is no reason for me to leave a tip. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. And I've never done it, and I never will do it. Thank you. He was aghast. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. John, on the Tom Likas show, hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing great. Um, I just wanted to comment on that guy. He might want to find a new job. I was a professional waiter for 12 years before I changed and got my career that I wanted. And I gave people great service, extra napkins if they had kids. You know, there's certain things you do. Lemons with seafood, barbecue sauce with steaks. Perfect service every time. And still 8, 7, 10% tip. Professional courtesies, 15%. And 
Most Americans are they're just too cheap, and they don't tip you. Well, I think it depends on what kind of restaurant you work at. Were you at a high-end restaurant? Sometimes. Sometimes just at a, a Olive Garden Recounters. I worked at several different restaurants. Well, it, you know, I think when you're at cheap restaurants, uh, you can expect cheap customers. If somebody's coming in with a coupon from the Sunday paper on all-you-can-eat shrimp night, why would you expect a big tip from that fat guy? He's just a freeloader. Makes sense. All right. I mean, uh, and there are restaurants. We don't have to go down the list. You know which ones they are. They're the kind that have coupons in the newspaper. And people show up or they've got, you know, deals for six ninety nine or eight ninety nine or whatever. W what kind of person do you think is going to show up? It's people who normally eat at the drive through window. Yeah, but the, the, the old school saying is... is People in the old days used to tip before they were served. And in the old days, before. there were no drive through windows. You don't understand. You know, in the old days, you're talking about people went to rest. They dressed up, and they went to rest. They've had shirts with buttons, and they went to a restaurant, and they sat down at a table with the entire family, and they ate, and they were in acculturated to the idea of sitting down with the family at a restaurant. We don't do that in this country anymore. Um, there, everybody out there eats at least one meal a week driving through the drive through and throwing the cartons out the window. These are not people who go to a restaurant and know all of the ins and outs of sitting down at a table. True, but what do you think of the concept of what TIP stands for, to ensure proper service? People, people well, actually, the, tip the word TIP stands for to, to ensure, really it stands, service. actually, TIP stands for to ensure promptness. And um, the fact is that uh, many people, even if they do a good job, they are not prompt. But by the same token, when you are working at a place that has all-you-can-eat ceviche tacos, what kind of customer do you expect to get but a cheapskate? Well, I, I agree with you. I worked at a lot of just your standard, you know, American family restaurants, people raising kids and stuff. Well, so what it, kind it, of people do you expect to see? You might yeah, be seeing people who it, never it, eat at a restaurant. What's that? You're probably going to see people who never eat at a restaurant. <laughs> no, they, they all ate plenty. I just was saying, I, you know, I just was always baffled. Even when I gave perfect service, you know, people would... You know, talk to them, be nice, and, and they still just leave you a crap tip. Again, I'm sure if you worked at Patina, you would not get a crap tip. I'm sure if you worked at Providence, a restaurant right uh, near our studio on Melrose Avenue, I'm sure you'd get a big tip. Uh, if you worked at a restaurant, uh, any restaurant that uh, is a big name, Spago, any Wolfgang Puck restaurant, I'm sure you'd be tipped well. But if if you work at places where the prices end in 99, you cannot expect big tippers to walk in the door. Oh, that makes sense. I'm a custom Corvette builder now, and so I just I, that's why I never went to any of those. Uh, I mean, you just have to be I realistic. Just want to make a career as a waiter. If a, if, if if an entree is 6.99, you're not going to be uh, dealing with uh, a, a wealthy person who's going to be tipping. That's true, but I mean, for for many years, I was a, a very very low income earner, and I still no matter. And so where are I most go, of your customers. More, but I would still tip like a dollar a drink. You know, there's no matter even if I was broke as hell, I'd still tip at least a dollar a drink. And I see lots of people. You know, I've known bartenders. I've been a bartender. They get a drink. They get two drinks. But, but these are but these all. people don't even know the benefits of tipping the bartender. Bartenders, I tip have a little heavier pour for me than they do for other people. Of course. That's uh, why I always took so, my bartender. So my point <laughs> is you're getting something for what you're paying for. But you know what? When you tip at Starbucks, you don't get crap. I agree. Well, I don't want to tie the phone. That's about all I got. All right, John. He's spent. John Lightfoot. 1-800-5800-TOP. John Lightfoot. Do you teach the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jared on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, uh, I moved here from Colorado six months ago. And uh, my commute sucked. 
And then my friend told me about your radio show, and it's been a lot better. So thanks a lot. Oh, I'm here to help. <laughs> I called because uh, you said tip uh, means uh, to ensure promptness, but insure is with an E. Uh, so I think you might be a little confused. Uh, no, that's uh, how it's done, to insure. So why does it say T-I-P on the... On because, the they, because the person who came up with the word... Uh, that's with the way they uh, they said it. Insure, I N S U R E. Whether it's right or not, that was how it uh, came about. And if you check it in a dictionary or an encyclopedia, you'll see it. Okay. No, I just wanted to call in because I was confused. That's all. Yes. By the way, uh, I'm not. You know, that's that's a vague area because I do believe the word insure is a word I N S U R E because that's where the word insurance comes from. Yeah, insure is a verb. And, like, I'm going to insure my car. But then if you're saying, like, I'm going to insure that I listen to Tom like it. That's still a verb. Yeah, but it's with an E. Well, and, but you and, just said it's because it was a verb. Well, it's a verb in both cases. Uh, the, uh, what's the word for what a what a word actually is? What's um, a word for what a word actually is? It's called a word. You know, the grammar... For for that is this it, it, it doesn't affect the spelling. It's two different words. It's like um, it's like yeah. Well, how do you use one and how do you use the other? I just said you insure a car and then you ensure that you do something today, or you ensure that that you that you're going to go to work. I I don't see the uh, difference between those two. Insuring your car is is putting an insurance policy on your car. Ensuring that you go to work is, is essentially a guarantee that you're going to work. So what's the difference? Really? Okay. <laughs> Are we talking to each other? Are we having the same conversation? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, let's say hello to Alicia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. What about you? I'm doing pretty awesome. It's Friday. My good. Yep. I was just calling. I have a question about tipping um, for going to the nail salon, doing manicures and pedicures, and also when you get your hair cut. Well, uh, I would say that uh, haircuts generally deserve a tip if the job is well done and prompt. Now, if I have a 2 o'clock appointment on Saturday to see you and I don't get until 2.45, uh, I'm starting to question whether I'm going to tip you because my time has value. What about the nail salon place? How are we still weird tipping them because I figured they overcharge enough anyway. So I don't even want to tip them. Well, you don't have to. Uh, you know, for me, um, I tip when people do a superior job. Superior. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense. Then I'm not going to tip. I'm just going to keep my money. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to be very popular among the service sector. one eight hundred five eight hundred. 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing, Nick? Good. Thank you very much. Uh, just want to say hello to you and ask a question. Yes. Tom, uh, I uh, I was wondering, you know, is it baffling me that uh, about this uh, New York governor that uh, his wife was by her, by him, and I don't know why. I'm sure she has millions of reasons why. And uh, my question is that, you know, she didn't have to be there. She didn't have to be there. I'll tell you what, if it were me and somebody did that to me, I would not be there showing my support. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think about it? You know, you think is 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 that some type of, uh, you know, the saying something to American people that I, she doesn't care or? Well, she's supposedly showing support for him. Uh, and uh, I guess we're all supposed to believe that she's not just like a hostage in a hostage video. Uh-huh, yeah. But uh, that's what it's supposed to show. I think it's stupid. 
And uh, frankly, uh, you know, women always talk about me being a misogynist or demeaning women. What's more demeaning to women than this woman who just got the crap kicked out of her uh, going up there two days in a row and standing next to this moron? That's true, yeah. Nothing I did is as damaging to women as that. Absolutely. And uh, she actually brings herself down a lot, I think. She what? She brought herself down a little bit because she didn't have to be by him. No, she didn't have to be, and I don't think she should have been. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's kind of sad, I guess, for uh, some people that uh, why, why she was there. Yeah, well, now she has to be in New York while the Top 40 station is playing his uh, hooker's uh, song uh, on an hourly basis. That's now uh, made the regular rotation on the Top 40 station in New York. <laughs> and uh, not only that, but, uh, of course, uh, every radio station, every talk show, everybody making fun of him. And Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, she wasn't uh, really a low woman. She graduates from Harvard, you know. She, she's a lawyer, you know, probably very wealthy. But you, you already uh, answered my question. Yeah, I'm guessing there are millions of good reasons for her to be standing there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, it's, really, it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh... I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Wide open telephones. Step it up. Deborah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Okay, this is, I actually, I met you briefly at the Orange County Fair, um, car show. Yeah. Anyways, that's not what I called to talk to you about. I called to talk to you about these the, Did you say the Orange County Fair? No, I, yeah, I said that, but I meant the car show. Oh, the uh, Orange County Car Show. Yes, I was yeah, there. They, Orange County yeah. Fair, I've never been. No, I meant the car show. I, okay. I messed up. Uh, but I was calling about these sober living homes that are, um, like, invading um, to our areas like where we live. And it's kind of getting a little bit much to where I've got two on my block, and they want to put another one on our block. And what are your neighbors saying about it? Well, we just found out about it, and uh, we I haven't got to my neighbors yet. I was just wondering what if any advice that you might have for me that I could do about it. Well, it involves your neighbors getting together and objecting strenuously. Okay. You've got to get them all together. you got to find out where City Hall is and go down there and make a stink. I've, I already went to, I already went with to City With your Hall neighbors. Yesterday. With your neighbors. You all have to go together. Okay. Okay. And is that all I can do? Well, let's see if it's effective. Generally, that is effective. Yeah, okay. If a bunch of you show up there and say this is wrong, this has got to stop. Uh, I mean, your city's not that big. This is true. It's not that big. Okay. Um, is there I mean, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. It's a lot harder in Los Angeles, where the mayor's got his pants off and uh, the <laughs> city council is in the back pocket of every developer and the film industry. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're right. Yeah. What are we drinking today, by the way? We have a little sip over there? Yeah, I like my wine, too. You like your wine, too? What are we drinking? Oh, Chardonnay. Chardonnay, what kind? Um, I actually two bucks up. <laughs> You're a cheap drunk, then, huh? Well, you know, I, I just like I like wine, but I don't have a lot of money to afford um, nice wine. So. That's about as cheap as you... Well, you know what? There's one cheaper. The 99-cent you know, only store has had 99-cent Cabernet. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. I, w I want to tell you, it is uh, it is right there. They have a big picture of it on the bulletin board over there at Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> You're funny. Excuse me for my cackle. But <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. 
<laughs> boozing it up there. It's rather early to get all boozed up, isn't it? I'm not all boozed up. I've had a glass of wine. Sounds I'm like it's a affecting you. I'm nervous about talking to you because I want to see your show. Oh, come on. I'm harmless. Well, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I listen to your show all the time, so anyway. So you know how work. harmless I am. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you tear people up. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, you do. Yes, if I'm not spanking them. Pardon me? If I'm not spanking them. Okay. Yeah, well, that sounds like fun, too. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, it's been great talking to you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. All right. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. It's Bob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. Great, great show. I've been listening to you a long time, man. Thank you. Um, i, I got to tell you, candidly, I'm one of those people, and I want to thank you, like I told the producer. I'm one of those people that's always been tipping in Starbucks and I'll leave like a dollar, I'll leave like two dollars in the little box. Like if it's like four fifty or five fifty, I'll leave the change plus a dollar. And a lot of the times they don't even see me putting it in there, number one. So I don't even get like a thank you. And today I gotta tell you, you hit the nail on the head a few minutes ago. They're pouring me a cup of coffee and I'm tipping them to pour me a cup of coffee. They putting coffee in a cup. <laughs> you know what? I'm stupid. I mean, I'm realizing this, so I want to thank you for, like, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to tip them for, you, you really, you were talking to me, okay? Like, they're pouring me a cup of coffee, and I'm tipping them a dollar or two dollars. What am I doing that for? I agree with you. Um, and the thing about bartenders, you were talking about that. In the in the restaurants, in the bars, where they have those stupid little, uh, the, the things, the pre-measured thing, where they pour it in, and it's a pre-measured thing. I don't see any reason to tip a bartender when it's a pre-measured little thing. If they're pouring right out of the bottle, and to your point, they can pour you extra if you're taking care of them, then I'll tip them heavy. But a lot of these restaurants, they get those little pre-done, you know what I'm talking about? Like it's Yeah, they, they, they now have um, uh, uh, like a gadget on the bottle that, that regulates the flow. Of course, they could pour it twice. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. But uh, the point uh, the point's well taken. You, I'm too nice a guy, and, you know, i got to, like, stop just throwing You're not a in. nice guy. You're a fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not anymore. Not in that instance. By the way, let's take Starbucks as an example, okay? Yeah. I want to take Starbucks as an example. Let me, uh, I'm, I'm on the Morningstar.com website, and I want to find a little information about Starbucks, and there it is. I'm just going to uh, look them up on Morningstar, and I'm going to tell you some facts about them. All right. Would you like to know facts about this Starbucks? Uh, yeah, I would. I All would, right. actually, yes. All right, because I think uh, you'd be fascinated to see this. And let me see. There it is. There it is. Hang on. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to find you a Starbucks. Yes. Thank you for waiting. It's just a matter of Your time. Your patience is appreciated. Please yes. hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. Mm -hmm. Just take a moment here. Your call is important to us. Thanks for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line. Yeah. Thank you for waiting. Your call your is important is to us. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Almost there. Scrolling through. Thanks for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line. Thank you for waiting. Okay, I got it. There we go. There we go. All right, Bob, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, so there you are. There you are tipping the poor barista at Starbucks. Let's review. 
Uh, the corporation, Starbucks, is worth $12.784 billion. Are you aware of that? Uh, now I am. <laughs> Are you, I feel like an idiot. Uh, last year, Starbucks made, this is sales at Starbucks, $9.823 billion selling $5 cups of coffee. Oh, man. That's That's how much they made in sales. And uh, they got a B in profitability from uh, from uh, from uh, Morningstar dot com. And uh, let's look through here. Let's see net income uh, nineteen point two, EPS twenty two point five. That is very nice. All I can tell you is that according to what I'm reading here, Starbucks is making lots and lots of money, mm. lots of money. Yeah, no, your point, you're right, man. I mean, the only one of the few smart things I've done is not get married, so that's that's been cool. Been... Yeah, but uh, you got to pay attention to this. This is very important. Uh, when you tip at Starbucks, it yeah. is supposed to make up for the lousy salaries people are receiving. If you're right. paying four bucks for a cup of coffee, yeah. and the company made nine point eight billion dollars last year, yeah, uh, they should be able to pay the employees. You're right. I shouldn't have not to you. And what a right. scam. You're right, man. No, you're right. Tom, it's another example. You're right much more than you're wrong, and people should listen to you. They right? both should listen to me. That's right. You know, so can you can you check me out bong style? Bong style. Here you go, Bob. No golf. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Tammy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, how's it going? It's going great. Do tell. I am looking for a recommendation for an amazing bottle of bubbly for my birthday this weekend. Really? Well, how yeah. much do you want to spend? Um, mm, I don't Watch. think there's a price tag. Fifteen bucks. Uh, no, sir, do you really want champagne or do you want sparkling wine? I mean, Definitely my choice price. My choice is going to be about 350 400 bucks. Okay, let me have it. All right, it's Krug. Not uh -huh. Charles Krug. That's a whole different company. Krug, K-R-U-G. Okay. It is my favorite, favorite sparkling wine. Any particular vintage? Well, uh, the one I had uh, that I loved at my dinner in Tuscany uh, when I had a $2,500 dinner was 1990, but I think 1995 and 1998 are also wonderful. Amazing. I'm partial to the Grand Dame, but I'm always open to new suggestions. Well, to me, I'm, by the way, I've, I've, I've drunk the Grand Dame many times, made by Tattinger, but uh, I'm sorry, Perrier. Uh, the, the, no, the, no, Veuve Clicquot. Veuve Clicquot, sorry. Uh -huh. But uh, I, I must say that uh, Krug is my fave. It is my absolute fave. Le Grand Dame is about $185 a bottle. Yes. And, well, uh, I'm so excited to try it. Yes, it's my fave. And believe me, it made my meal in Tuscany. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. Hey, I have a favor. Yes. Can you take me out with a screaming orgasm and a number nine? Uh, I certainly can. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine, number nine, number nine. Number nine. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Troy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, uh, Tom? Still a radio show here, Troy. How are you doing? Okay, we smoking weed. What are you doing over there? No, not at all. Nothing. I just have a. I just have These a people who get on the air after smoking weed. It's outrageous. <laughs> or drinking, or whatever uh, they're doing. <laughs> this infuriates me, Tom. The fact that. That girl, that uh, Ashley Dupree, yes. she's making over $200,000 off of that song. People are downloading it like crazy. Yeah, and it's, it's one of the like, worst songs like, ever recorded, too. This man is, is destroyed, and she's going to be a millionaire. And it's not even to talk about all the hustler uh, things that's going to happen or penthouse. Oh, yeah. She's going to be a multi, multi-millionaire. I know. Pretty good for some chunky chick with... Uh, yeah, you're right. She's like a stick. She's like a, a hunchback in Notre Dame. Have you seen that posture? It's outrageous. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. Hey, Tom, could you blow me up? Here you go, Steve. 
Hey, Tom, stick out the bong here. Oh, the bong here. Here it is, Sandy. Six <laughs> oh, thanks, Tom. Thank hey, you. Yeah, Everybody should be a Tom like this listener. Let me up, Tom. Detroit style, please. Let me up. I'll take you out to Detroit style. Let me up, Tom. Me out, JFK Jr. Here you go, Steve. Are you ready? God, I love that. It's the Tom Likas Show.